This is Calm AF, a podcast for humans who are hard on themselves. A podcast for the overthinkers, people pleasers, perfectionists, and overachievers. I'm Kristen Finch, and I'm going to teach you how to quiet that incessant negative chatter in your head. Because you know what a person with a calm mind can do? Anything they want. Grab your coffee, gorgeous soul, because today's the day you get calm AF. Hello, gorgeous soul. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Calm AF. Um, I want to start by um, adding, it's not a disclaimer. I just want to start by telling you, you're going to hear my voice. (laughs) It sounds like I'm sick, maybe. It sounds gravelly. It's what us speech pathologists call glottal fry, and it is the result of this weekend. I hosted the Calm AF retreat over the weekend. It was absolutely amazing. I will definitely probably devote a whole entire episode to everything, uh, the whole experience. Um, But I haven't finished like integrating it yet. I haven't finished reflecting on it. I don't have the words yet. So we're not going to talk about that today. But you are going to hear in my voice, glottal fry, because my poor vocal cords have not had time to recover from basically talking and laughing for like three straight days. So I'm not sick. This is just how my voice sounds because I haven't given my voice a break, a long enough break apparently. Just want to put that out there because it's probably going to bother me more than it bothers you. I can hear it very clearly. Um, You'll probably hear it as the episode goes on, but I just wanted to tell you. Or make myself feel better by saying, I know, I hear it too. But we're not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about all of that. Today, I want to talk about your diet. To be clear, I'm not talking about necessarily, I'm not necessarily talking about food or calories or like a keto diet or a whatever the new thing is, a fasting diet, whatever. I am not talking about that necessarily. I am going to talk about the Calm AF Diet. Here is the thing. When you decide that you are going to take your life back, when you've decided that you're not just going through the motions isn't cutting it anymore, when you decide that this overthinking and anxiety and and people-pleasing and energy managing and all of that is just, you just need to be done with it and you need to stop and you start learning all of these new patterns, this new way of thinking. When you start learning about nervous system re- regulation and feeling your feelings instead of numbing them out and, um, you know, rewiring your mind. When you start learning all of these things, you start learning a new way of being, right? This is a whole new way of, of being in the world. And I want you to remember that this is it's a vulnerable place, right? There's this very long stretch of time where you were believing all of your old things. You were living the way you were, where there was the patterns that you are undoing right now. And you are in the process of becoming your future self, your calm AF self, but you're still kind of in this vulnerable place. Your new beliefs are very vulnerable. I want you to think of it like a newborn baby. Like newborn babies can't survive without an adult. They need this constant protection. An adult saying like what's allowed and what's not allowed. I remember when Emily was born. She was born at the beginning of December, right at the beginning of winter. And basically the pediatrician told us, listen, you know, she hasn't built up her immune system yet. She is vulnerable to germs and viruses. So, you know, obviously live your life, but you really want to try and limit the amount of time you have her out, especially in like big crowds with lots of people, especially if everybody's sick right now, just you want to limit that exposure. As you start becoming this calm AF version of yourself, the one who sets boundaries, the one who doesn't people please, the one who is speaking up for yourself and letting yourself be seen and heard for who you are, you are basically like this newborn baby. You are vulnerable, right? And with that means you need to have protection around these vulnerable beliefs. You need to have some sort of boundary, some sort of protection that's going to decide what gets to come in the room with the newborn vulnerable beliefs and what doesn't. Okay, What is going to be helpful 
and, and healthy and what isn't, okay? And so it's like a diet. We call it the Calm AF diet. There are two parts to the Calm AF diet. First, you're going to limit consumption of anything that's not supporting your growth. And the second part is to add things that do support your growth, okay? So you're going to do less things that make you feel further away from your Calm AF version of yourself and add more things that make you feel more aligned. So let's talk about limiting consumption first. Now, obviously, when I say the word diet, the first thing we think about is food and drinks. And yes, how you are treating your body, what you're eating, what you're drinking is going to be impactful in your your journey and your kind of like hardwiring of your Calm AF self-beliefs. The reason being isn't because, you know, you need to have some like perfectly, you know, clean body. No, it's just you when you think about the Calm AF system, right? I've talked about that in the past, but as a reminder, the Calm AF in order to be Calm AF, you have to be tending to the entire Calm AF system. And we talk about it being the mind, the body, and the energy bubble, right? But those aren't separate things. So yes, whatever you are bringing in as far as food and drinks is going to affect your mind. It is going to affect your energy. All of the things are interconnected. It's not just one thing that matters the most. So yes, what you eat, what you drink is definitely going to impact things like your mindset and your nervous system and how you're feeling. Your ability to access higher level thinking is definitely going to be impacted by what you're eating and what you're drinking. So when we're talking about limiting things that are not supportive of that calm AF vulnerable place that you're in, it does include food and drinks and anything else you put in your mouth, right? If you have a diet that consists heavily of fast food or junk food or alcohol or drugs, it's going to have an impact on the whole system. Now, this doesn't mean you have to stop consuming. I want you to hear this part, right? Because I think a lot of times when we are trying to unlearn that perfectionist mindset, we often use a perfectionist mindset to unlearn it. (laughs) So when we say limiting things that aren't supportive, I'm not saying never ever have any of it ever again, right? That's actually going to create the opposite effect. Right? When, when we spend an excessive amount of time trying to hypervigilantly do something perfectly, especially when it comes to food and drinks, um, that is not going to be healthy for your mind. I promise you. That is stressful AF. And guess what? Guess what? There are actually a lot more diseases and illnesses that you can track back to stress than cookies. Okay? Just going to put that out there. This isn't about doing anything perfectly or doing anything all or nothing. We just want to be limiting, right? Like when when Emily was born, the doctor was like, keep her in her room and don't open the windows and wear a hazmat suit. That's not what we're saying here, right? She was saying, go out, live your life. But listen, just be be normal about it, right? If everybody's got the flu, don't go there with a newborn baby. We just want to do this with the Calm AF diet by running it through the filter. Will this food or drink support what I want my life to feel like? Will it support who I'm becoming? And if it's a yes, do it. If it's a no, then just maybe ask some follow-up questions, right? Like, am I choosing this food because I'm trying to avoid something? Maybe my thoughts. I'm trying to numb out my thoughts. I'm trying to numb out my feelings. Or is this just going to make me feel good temporarily and then it's going to make me feel worse later? I'll give you an example for myself. My future self, I don't drink much alcohol. It doesn't support me. Um, I am also of the age now, which is a little inside joke for my retreaters. I am of the age that alcohol messes with my sleep. So it's really not something that I do very much. I limit it. But this weekend, someone recommended this margarita mix called Coyote Gold. Apparently, it's only made in Colorado. I did not know this. And she requested it, so I got it. And I'm like, oh, I'm excited to try this. Like, I love how margaritas taste. I love that taste. It's going to feel delightful for me to try it. I do know that it is not perfectly aligned with my future self. It might impact my sleep, but I'm going to choose it anyway, okay? So that is an example of knowing that there is something that 
you know, maybe not perfectly aligned with, you know, who you're becoming or whatever, but it's still, you can still choose it by running it through the filter. Will this bring me joy? Yep. So that means I'm going to go ahead and drink that margarita. And I am so glad I did. It was delicious. Highly recommend it. Okay. It aligned with how I wanted to feel in that moment. I wanted to feel joy. I wanted to feel that connection with the person. Okay. So that's part of it, right? We're always going to start with the food because that's the most obvious place to start. But I also want you to start thinking about the other things you're consuming, what your eyes are consuming, your ears, your nose, your skin. What are you watching? What are you reading? What are your eyes seeing? Is it making you feel like the way you want to feel? Is it, is it more in alignment with your future self or not? Okay. What does your space look like? What do you see? What are the things that you are visually consuming? Do they support or do they drain? Also thinking about what you're listening to, what you're hearing, what are the sounds that are like making up the background of your life, okay? Let's start right here, right now in this moment. Right now, you, the sound that you are consuming is me, my glottal fry voice. Thank you. (laughs) So you're just going to put this through a filter. Is this message, let's put the glottal fry aside, is the message that you are consuming lifting you up? Does it make you feel how you want to feel? Does it make you feel like it's bringing you closer to the feeling state that you want to feel? Does it feel supportive? I hope so. That's always my intention, right? My intention is very much to come in, remind you that you're awesome, give you a few tips in case you forgot you're awesome, and then be on my way. And then you go off and live your life, right? It's in my intention to keep things simple, especially because of how much kind of like auditory consumption I know that you are all listening to. I know there are a lot of podcasts out there on the subjects of improving your life, a lot of experts. And don't get me wrong, I love that the information is so readily and easily accessible, but please, as a warning from someone who is an insider in this industry, please be mindful and discerning about what you are actually feeling when you listen, right? When you consume the information, do you then apply it? Does it feel like it's like, does it feel urgent? Like, oh my God, I have to do this. Or does it feel like, oh, that I can, that feels doable. Is it something that you are using or is it cluttering up your mind space, right? Is constantly consuming auditory information while you're in the car, while you're running errands, while you're taking a walk, while you're cleaning the house, making you feel capable and clear? Or is it making you feel like you're just doing things wrong or that you have now an even longer list of things to do? Okay. Oh my gosh. There's just so many. And again, I am not trying to say that the that, that there aren't amazing podcasts with amazing teachers teaching you things like how to set goals or how to breathe the right way or how to get out of bed in the morning, right? I I love that this is out there. I just want you to be discerning, run it through the filter. Do you end up feeling bad because you can't possibly incorporate all of these things into your life? This is the whole thing that I talk about, right? Like, I know what I should be doing. Why am I not doing it? There's too much information. That's not a good thing. Too much information doesn't create clarity. It creates confusion. It is cognitive overload. Not to mention, when you have 10 different experts filling your head, telling you how to live your life, and not all of them line up, right? Some of them is contradictory, right? So there's not only that confusion, but also, you know what happens when you have constantly, when you are constantly absorbing and consuming other people's information? You don't hear your own wisdom. You don't learn to trust yourself. You don't listen to yourself. You you can't hear your intuition when all you've got in your head is like Huberman and what's her name? Robbins. I can't think of all the names. Uh, All amazing people with lots of stuff, but like it's too much. It's too much. So just be discerning. Limit the amount of auditory information you are consuming, whether it's through podcasts or YouTube or even reading books or anything like that. Just take a break. Take a break, pick one or two people if you want to, or 
and we'll talk about this and what to add, you could even just like add more quiet, add more silence, add more, you know, just breaks to your life. Okay, also being cautious about social media, right? I I don't have to go into it. Everybody knows what social media is doing <laughs> to us. Our attention spans, it's it's like hardwiring our compare and despair neural network. It's a lot. So I want you to be very discerning about this that you are consuming. Don't get me started on the news. I hope you can see the damage that overconsumption of the news has created. The news is literally designed to freak out your nervous system to keep you tuned in, right? So I highly suggest if you do choose to watch the news at all, which I don't think you need to, I think we can we can get our information from other places. I still, I haven't watched the news in more than a decade. I am very aware of the things that are happening in the world. I promise. Um, just be discerning. Limit. Be discerning about the sound you are consuming, especially what's draining you. Think about what you're reading, right? Same thing, self-help books. It's just taking up space in your mind unless you are actively using it. Be discerning about what you're watching, right? Be discerning about the words you're speaking. All of these things, you want to limit anything that is making you feel less, that is pulling you away from how you want to feel, gossiping, complaining, venting, right? Even even in your head, what is happening here? You want to limit that because it is fueling your old patterns. And that new vulnerable way of thinking is kind of being forgotten in those moments. Okay, you want to be discerning about people. You may need to limit time with people. Certain people, you know who they are right now. You know exactly. I know you know who I'm talking about. (laughs) You're going to probably want to limit the time you spend with those people. Okay? Everything that comes into your sacred space, anything that comes in that you are consuming needs to be met by the bouncer at the door, the mom of the newborn. Right? Because as you're becoming calm AF, those new beliefs are vulnerable. Okay? So that's the first part, the calm AF. That's why we want to be so cautious about what we are allowing in and limiting the things that aren't great. Now let's talk about what to add to your Calm AF diet. In a nutshell, anything that supports the life you're creating, the person you're becoming, and the way you want to feel. More sights, more sounds, more tastes, more experiences that lift you up, that align with your future self, that align with the life that you want to be living. Last week, this was this is perfect timing. Last week in our Calm AF group call, uh, someone had asked a question after she had gone through the physical health module in the Calm AF course. And in the course, I basically ended it by saying, in order to reduce suffering, we should increase pleasure or something like that. And so she was like, I totally get that. But she's like, basically, what about Oreos? <laughs> right? She knows long-term. We all know long-term, kind of like me with the margarita mix, right? I know that this isn't directly aligned with my future self, um, but it sure does add some pleasure to the moment, okay? So her question was basically, isn't too much pleasure going to create suffering in the long-term? And I told her, right? Like, yes, kind of, but The reason why this question is so good is because it's basically proof of how absolutely pleasure deficient, how joy deficient, how delight deficient we are. When I ask people to, when I tell them, when I give them the assignment to add more things that bring you joy to your life, 90% of the time they're like, well, I'm going to weigh 8 million pounds, right? Because I'm just, it's going to be Oreos and it's going to be cake and it's going to be chips and salsa and it's going to be alcohol and right that's what our brain goes to like that's the limited repertoire of pleasure and joy that we have it's deficient right the calm af diet is yes about limiting our exposure and consumption to things that drain us that move us away from how we want to feel but more important part of the diet is to add more pleasure 
add more exposure and consumption of the things that light us up, that make us feel pleasure or joy or happy. And we need to expand it past food, right? We want to be aligning with more things that make a moment in time feel how you want to feel, right? That's why I had the margarita. Because this moment, oh, it was just delight. It was fun. It felt bubbly, the whole thing. So let's expand it beyond food, what things that can add some joy and pleasure to your life. Let's talk about sound, right? If you enjoy consuming sound through podcasts or whatever, what about music? I think people often forget music is such an easy way to add more experiences that light you up, that bring you closer to your future self. Music makes you feel, right? You can get aligned with whatever feeling you want to feel based on the song you choose, right? But there's other sounds. The sound of leaves blowing in the trees. We were just talking about it this weekend at the retreat. The aspens, make, they make this little like shimmery sound. It's my, one of my favorite sounds. That can add joy to my life the way snow sounds when you walk on it, the way our dog breathes, right? The way your partner laughs. You can add more sounds that make you feel the way your future self feels. It doesn't just have to be which podcast you pick. And as far as food, it doesn't just have to be what kind of food you eat. Add more nature. Nature is just perfectly balanced. It makes us feel good without having to do anything. Add more movement. A stagnant body creates stagnant energy. Go for a walk. Add nature. Add more fun to your diet. Whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's going dancing. Maybe dancing is what you want to consume. Maybe it's getting under a blanket and consuming a book, a fiction book that makes you feel really happy. Maybe it's connecting with friends who support you. This weekend at my retreat, the reason why these retreats are so soul-filling for me and the women who come to the retreat is because it's full of things that are moving us towards how we want to feel, our future self, lives. Yes, that includes good food and good drinks, but there's also the sound of laughter and the feeling of laughter, and there's, there's so much feeling in general. There's, there's all of the feelings that aren't being held in. They're being released, right? We're connecting. We're out in nature. When you're learning how to be the future self version of you, no matter what that means for you, You want to keep in mind this Calm AF diet. Yes, limit the things that pull you back into your old ways, but also just really prioritize adding more of the things that make you feel aligned. Spend more time adding those things than you do thinking about how to limit. I promise you, it's just the easier route in becoming your future self. Okay? All right. That's the Calm AF diet. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my glottal fry was not too distracting. (laughs) I'm going to go be silent now. Grab some water. Make sure you check the link in the show notes to get added to the Calm AF daily wait list. So I send out these daily little love notes, these love letters to my my Calm AF life members. And it's so impactful that I decided I want to add this for people you know, who aren't in the program, who also want to get these daily reminders. They are definitely an addition to the Calm AF diet that will help you feel more aligned to your future self every single day. That's how you start every morning. It's a great addition to your Calm AF diet. Make sure you click the link and sign up for that wait list. And anything else that might be in the show notes, I'm going to stop talking. My voice is about gone. I love you so much. I will see you next time. Thanks for listening. And before you go, one more thing. So as you know, I am slightly obsessed with helping as many humans tap into their calm AF-ness as possible. So if this podcast has helped you, would you please leave a review, make sure you're subscribed and share it with your friends. Also, make sure you head on over to kristenfinch.com to see how you can work with me. You can sign up for my emails and get any other goodies I have available. Until next week, I love you so much. I am so grateful that you're here. I'll see you next time.